what analysis is carried out regarding the implementation and potential impact of short-term lets legislation. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robinson. So in uh, December 2020, we published six different impact assessments. These and a separate business regulatory impact assessment were informed by evidence and information from partners and stakeholders and set out analysis on the likely costs, risks and benefits of short uh, let sector regulation. We will continue to work with local authorities and in the summer of 2023 we will review levels of short term let activity in hotspot areas to assess how the actions we are taking are working and ensure that there are no unintended consequences. Miles Briggs. Um, thank you, President Officer. I know that the Cabinet Secretary is acutely aware of the concerns being expressed, especially by Class 7 guest houses and bed and breakfasts, which have been included in the scheme by some councils, which should have been excluded, and indeed many councils not even having in place the teams to do this work. Like many small businesses, short-term lets um, are still to recover very much so from the COVID pandemic. The Scottish Association of Self-Caterers have warned that the Scottish Government's legislation will negatively impact on the sector and are now calling for the implementation of this legislation to be delayed. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, with this in mind, will she agree to delaying this legislation and take on board these growing concerns on the negative impact this will have? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, so let me try and, and deal with all of these points. Um, the, on the, the first issue of uh, delay calls, um, we've introduced, as a member knows, uh, licensing to uh, first and foremost ensure that there are mandatory safety standards for short-term lets across Scotland. And of course, it also provides local authorities with the powers to introduce additional licensing conditions to address issues that are of concern to their local area. As a member will also know, many short-term lets already comply with these conditions and for those that don't, it is important that they, these are in place as soon as possible to ensure a level playing field and safety uh, across Scotland. There is a transition period for existing operators and they have until the 1st of April 2023 to apply for a licence and may continue to operate while their licence is being determined. Um, Miles Briggs mentioned uh, the, the issue of guest houses uh, specifically. Uh, which I am uh, happy to, to deal with um, because I think it's important for clarity here. Um, the Civic Government uh, Scotland Act 1982 um, or uh, um, 1982 Order uh, 2022 does not reference planning use classes. Schedule 1 lists excluded accommodation which includes hotels with planning permission granted for use as a hotel, but it doesn't list guest houses with planning permission granted for use as a guest house as an exclusion. Therefore, to be clear, unless otherwise excluded by any of the criteria set out in Schedule 1 of the licensing order, short-term let accommodation will require a license to operate, and this includes guest houses. Now, we've been clear uh, about that uh, for quite some time, and certainly since June 2021. Um, so um, I would hope there would be no misunderstanding there. Um, and on the issue of promotion, um, we will be um, ensuring uh, that there is a, a campaign running from uh, October, which again will make uh, information uh, in the public domain very clear indeed. And of course, we have, uh, I have written to local authority housing conveners and chief executives to remind them of their duty to establish short-term le licensing schemes by the 1st of October this year. Miles Briggs. Um, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer, but I think it is a complacent one in the sense of the inconsistencies which we are seeing across local authorities in the implementation of this government legislation. And the Deputy First Minister, for example, has been telling guest houses in his own constituency that they are exempt. So I think the Scottish Government clearly are not giving the right information as well to constituents, to businesses. And what is clear, I think, from what the Cabinet Secretary said today, is this does need a bit of time to properly work and to be bedded in. So can I go back to the key point which I asked? Is Does she not now realise that this legislation is a mess and needs to have a pause for councils to properly implement it, especially given many haven't even employed the staff yet who will be tasked with doing this? 
Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, first of all, I, I do not uh, accept the, that description of this legislation. We have had numerous consultations on this legislation. Parliament has had ample uh, time to scrutinise it. There has been widespread consultation with stakeholders and stakeholder input into the stakeholder implementation group. Um, the, the member mentioned uh, inconsistencies. Um, during this year, we have worked with the Scottish Housing Network and officials from across all local authorities to plan for implementation of the licensing scheme. And this has involved discussing different local approaches to understand the rationale and facilitate common processes where possible to do so. So there will be some circumstances where, as I gave my answer uh, earlier, there will be local variation because of local need. But we have tried, where possible, to ensure that there are common processes and that there are simple uh, online information and application processes that should be straightforward for applicants to follow. Paul McLennan. Thank you, President Officer. During the Local Government Housing and Planning Committee scrutiny of the short-term lets licence scheme, most councils expressed support or enthusiasm for the plans, especially those with tourist hotspots. With these new measures, does the Cabinet Secretary believe that councils will feel more empowered to balance tourism with the needs of their local communities? Cabinet Secretary. Um, yes, uh, I do uh, agree with that. Uh, local communities have told us uh, over a number of years about their safety concerns and the impact that the concentration of lets, short-term lets can have on communities and the availability of housing. Uh, regulation of short-term lets is appropriate for the whole of Scotland and offers considerable flexibility to local authorities on how it's implemented. And licensing will, of course, allow uh, councils and communities to take action to manage issues more effectively without unduly curtailing some of the, the benefits of short-term lets to, to host visitors and the Scottish economy. But we need to ensure that they are safe and uh, providing uh, people providing them are suitable uh, and fit and proper people to do so, and I'm surprised that anyone could disagree with that. Sarah Boyack. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I refer members to my register of interest? Cabinet Secretary, while we've waited for the SNP government to act on short term lets, thousands of homes were lost in Edinburgh. But Labour led Edinburgh Council have now implemented the new rules as quickly as possible but over £3 million was lost to the public purse in Edinburgh in the last financial year alone because of the loophole that still exists where short-term let owners can move to business rates and then receive the 100% small business bonus scheme discount. So given that the Scottish Government committed years ago to reviewing the tax treatment of short-term lets, what progress has been made on that review and when will that review be completed? Cabinet Secretary. Well, um you know, I think Sarah Boyack, um, in the interest of fairness, would possibly recognise that a lot of the groundwork was actually done under the previous administration in Edinburgh, completed under the current administration. And I think uh, anyone uh, giving a fair analysis would recognise that. Um, and we, of course, uh, were um, uh, happy to give ministerial approval to the uh, order that had been brought after proper uh, due consultation, which of course was welcomed as part of the short-term let control area that local authorities had to consult with their communities. And of course that takes time, but it's the right thing to do. And if we hadn't put that in, I'm sure people in this chamber would be raising concerns about uh, the lack of consultation locally. So I think that's the right balance and it's important to, to get it right. On the issue of taxation, we have taken steps to ensure that self-catering properties are correctly classified on the valuation rule for non-domestic rates tax purposes. Um, the, um, from the 1st of April uh, 2022, uh, premises are now required to be actually let for a period of at least 70 days and available for let for 140 days in the same financial year in order to be classed as self-catering. And that will go some way to uh, addressing some of the loopholes that Sarah Boyack uh, was uh, referring to. But I'm happy to give her any further information that she would find helpful in that regard. Question number two, Katie Clark. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will make a statement on the policing and arrests at events connected to the death